Continuing our trend with numerical methods, tangents, solutions, roots, all of that good stuff. Take a look at this question. It says the point P has x coordinate 2 and lies on this curve with equation xy is e to the x, xy is positive. Determine an equation for the tangent at P. Okay, forget about all the yap going on down there for now. Let's just focus on finding the tangent. All right, tangent. I don't even need to draw a diagram this time. We're just going to go straight into finding the gradient and then just do y minus y1. So how do you find the gradient here? Well, this looks like implicit differentiation to me because we have x and y mixed up. So they're two functions. We could just do implicit differentiation. Because they're two functions, though, we need to use the product rule. All right. Using the product rule, which is super simple. Differentiate the first term. x differentiates to 1 times the second term y. Then we differentiate the second term, y differentiates to 1, but because we're differentiating with respect to x, we write dy dx. So 1 dy dx. Then times the first term, x, equals the differential of e to the x, which is just e to the x. So we have y plus x dy dx is e to the x. Now we just need to sub in our x value of 2, but we also need the y value. Okay. So, how are we going to get the y value from here? We're just going to sub in x is 2. So now when x is 2, we get y, or 2y, is e squared. So we just divide by 2. So y is a half e squared. Let's sub that in. So we get a half e squared plus x, which is 2, dy by dx, is e squared. Move that over there. e squared, which is 1. 1 e squared minus a half e squared is a half e squared. And then you divide by 2. A half e squared divided by 2 is a quarter. So a quarter e squared. So now we're going to do y minus the y coordinate is the gradient x minus the x coordinate. Now I'm not quite sure what form they want it in. But they are doing the tangent meets the curve again at Q in the next part. So I think rearranging for Y makes the most sense. So we have Y minus a half E squared is a quarter E squared X minus two lots of this, which is a half E squared. Oh, these just cancel. Nice. So there's our solution. Just Y is a quarter E squared X. Part B. The tangent meets the curve again at Q. Show that the x-coordinate of Q is minus 0 0.6, correct to 1 SF. Okay, so if it's meeting the curve again, that's simultaneous equations. We're going to sub this into this and show that minus 0 0.6 is a solution, uh, correct to 1 SF. So what am I doing? So that there is going to be this, which when we times by x is going to make this x squared. So we get 1 quarter e squared x squared equals e to the power of x. Now we can't solve that. This is a nonlinear um, function. So how do we prove that minus 0 0.6 is correct to 1 SF? Well, this is very similar to how we do it in fixed point iteration. We just move it everything to one side and we let f of x equal whatever. So let's let f of x equal 1 quarter e squared x squared minus e to the x. Now they're already telling us the solution, so we don't need to show a change in sign um, between two random values. We need to show that this is correct to 1SF. This is a solution to 1SF. This is reminding me of bounds. You need to prove that all the values that do round to this give us a change in sign. Okay, so they're telling you the answer. We're going to work out the upper and lower bound. So this is 60. The lower bound will be 55. The upper bound will be 65. So we're going to do f of minus 0 0.65 and f of minus 0 0.55. Okay. Now for this, the best way to do this is to store the value. So I'm going to do minus 0 0.65 store as a. Then I have a quarter uh, e squared a squared minus e to the power of a. 
which gives me 0 0.258. Then I just press the calc button, change it to minus 0 0.55, which is minus. So we're going to say change in sign and f of x continuous for x uh, being between minus 0 0.65 and minus 0 0.5. That don't make sense, 65 and 55. 5. Therefore, minus 0 0.6 to 1SF or x is that to 1SF, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Use the Newton Raster method, method twice to find a better approximation to this. Okay, to find a better approximation to this or this equaling this. Okay, so we have our f of, f of x is this. What does the Newton Raster method say? Now, you guys should, if you've done enough um, revision, you'll be able to remember this formula is very simple. Remember, if you need a formula booklet, you've not revised enough. So, the newton raster method says, to find the next term, to find the next term, you do the previous term minus f of that previous term over f dash of that previous term. So, for us, our f of x is a quarter e squared. Man, my stomach is rumbling, man. x squared minus e to the x. You have to differentiate that. So you bring down the 2, because this is just a multiplier, right? x squared, bring down the 2, we get a half. e squared, not quite off the power. And e to the x differentiates to itself. Okay? So just to show you guys what one of the iterations would be. So we're going to start off with 0 0.6. Okay? So you're going to sub in 0 0.6 into this. So this is what we're going to type in the calculator. So wherever I write xn, we're going to be substituting in 0 0.6. So we get a quarter e squared xn squared minus e to the xn all over a half e squared xn minus e to the xn. Okay. So we're starting off with x naught is minus 0 0.6. And they only want us to do it twice, which is nice. Why don't I put my calculator down? Uh, so if they want us to do it twice, this uh, prepare for that. Don't need this information anymore. We only need x1 and x2. And do it to 4SF. So I'm going to do minus 0 0.6 equals answer equal. Now here I'm going to do answer minus fraction bracket. I'm just going to write 0 0.25 e squared, answer squared, minus e to the power of answer. And then on the denominator, I have 0 0.5 e squared, answer, minus e to the power of answer. Then we close that bracket. So I get minus 0 0.55 that's going to make it up to 80. Tested my rounding skills. Then the next one, the last one, minus 0 0.5569. And that is our solution. Yeah, guys, that is the newton raster method. I mean, the difference between the newton raster method and fixed point iteration, there's not much difference. The formula is slightly different. newton raster you have to differentiate, and that's it. But guys, numerical methods shouldn't really be that big of a deal. Obviously, the beginning bit is very algebraic, but the actual process of the newton raster method is not so bad. But if you did learn something today, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button. This is one of the toughest questions they can ask on the topic. Subscribe for more maths content. And if you're interested in my four A-level maths courses, more details are in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang community on Reddit to submit your own questions and get feedback from other fellow mathematicians. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.